Right. Hi, Katarina. Hi, Veronica. Nice to um, have you both back on the podcast. Hi, how are you, Adam? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. It's, um, yeah, it's good to connect with you both because you both, you know, know each other, don't you? You're both connected and know one another. We're both in check. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having us both because this is really interesting because we can share our knowledge, our experience together. So that's nice. Yeah, no, you're very welcome. And I think, you know, we're kind of like on the same kind of page um, of, you know, of what we're kind of like into. Um, and you guys, you guys mentioned that, you know, we could talk about like health and nutrition. Um, and I think like, you know, health and nutrition and, you know, mindset are all kind of very important, you know, in life. And especially, you know, with everything going on, it's, it's good to look after your health. Um, so like, would you... Would you, would you guys like to talk about like um, you, you know nutrition and why you know it's important and like you know in our lives? Yeah, sure. So I believe like the nutrition it's important to nourish our body on deep level, and during nutrition we can become awake. We can be healthy. We have energy. We have energy to live our lives. So that's what, but it's the most important, it's nutrition. If we have a bad nutrition, we don't have energy, we don't have health at all. So that, that's why I believe it's very important. And I also yeah. think that we are what we eat. <laughs> yeah. So it's very important to be mindful of what we are putting in our bodies. Yeah, no, I agree. I think like, a lot of the time people can kind of be on autopilot and just kind of like, you know, pick up random things and eat it and not really think about where it's come from. I mean, I, I've started more like recently thinking about where my food's coming from. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And also if we eat healthy, uh, we are, then we are, we become healthy and we are more confident because we feel good. We feel good and we want to discover more life and just do things what we couldn't do before because we didn't have energy for that. So it's also like people will start see that some, something changing with you. They see, oh, you're shining, you have more energy, you are more confident. And that's what we want to be. We want to feel like that, we want to feel happy, but it starts everything with the, what we put inside. Yeah. That's right, yes. It's also like every cell of our body is regen regenerating all the time. And basically we can make really the, the next meal can be the better choice. So it's like really at hand, you know, the change can be almost immediate. Also, we have to remember that our bodies know how to be healthy. So if we nourish it properly, the body knows how to heal of any illness. Yeah, so no, to I, I, the yeah. proper fuel to support the body, not uh, continue the destruction. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I think it's really important, and I think like what you eat, you know, it's it's your immune system as well, isn't it? Like you know what you eat, you know, kind of affects your energy. And I, I know, like if I eat certain things, you know, which aren't good for me, if I eat too much of that, I feel like you know, I notice the difference. But yeah, I, it's I like think... uh -huh. no, it's fine, it's fine. It's like nobody ever said, Oh, my best time in life was when I ate 10 uh, Mac burgers with triple cheese and 10 packs of fries. Nobody ever said that. Everybody mm. said, Oh my god, the best time of my life was when I was 20 pounds lighter and I was on this healthy lifestyle and then I slid off the track but anyway it was the best time of my life so it's always like when uh, when we eat better that's always like the best time of our lives like nobody said otherwise so mm. it you know we just have to be really more mindful and we have to realize this because these stories are all around us like you go to Instagram and everybody's like shedding weight and you know shedding the pounds kilos 
and everybody's trying to be healthy. Why? Because they feel better. And nobody says, oh, I wish I had those uh, 100 pounds back. Nobody says that. So, you mm. know, we just have to be mindful about how it really works. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. And I think social media is a good, a good way of uh, sharing and kind of promoting kind of diets, isn't it? And nutrition. There's a lot of people making like recipe videos and sharing it. So it, I think that can kind of encourage people to get involved and do it as well. Yeah, but also I wanted to say what it's important, what it's coming with food. It's uh, enough of sleep because if we don't have enough of sleep, we are more hungry and we just take more, something more oily or more salty because our body is tired. So it's also important to sleep enough to be sure that our body is not hungry for some uh, uh, fatty foods or some um, fast foods. Mm. Yeah. That's a very good point. Me personally, sometimes I like to oversleep because I feel like restart of the body and I'm like really very mindful of my sleep. So I really need good sleep every day. Otherwise I don't function. And again, then I have the cravings. So it's really trigger for the cravings when I don't sleep enough. Yeah, it's like it's everything connected together. Good sleep, uh, good food, then try to avoid stress. Also enough of movement, right? And kind of avoid also, yeah, that stress is important also. A lot of people, they eat in stress. So what it's also like recently, a lot of people do, they do mindfulness eating. So they are mind what they eat. They just sit and they focus on food. Otherwise, a lot of people, they eat in a rush. They just eat watching TV and they don't even know what they eat, how much they eat, and they are hungry again. So that's why it's important also to be mindful when we are eating. That's so true. That's so true. Love it. And, and then yeah. everything, it's like puzzle, to puzzle together. So one piece, second piece, and then we are super healthy, super powerful. <laughs> active and happy not stressed you know yeah i think it's really important like people should find happiness in whatever situation they are in like really we have to learn how to manage the stress and again with the proper food it's easier to manage stress because it really influences your hormones and influences your endocrine activity and stuff like that so really good food um helps you manage also your stress, your um, mood and stuff like that. And it really is true. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's all kind of interlinked, isn't it? Like, you know, our bodies, our minds, our sleep, our, you know, nutrition, you know, if we work out, it's all kind of linked all together. Um, and I, I find what, what catches me off guard is if I'm driving, if I go to like um, a town near me, and you know, I pass through McDonald's on the drive-through, and if I've if I'm short of time, I haven't had time to eat earlier. You know, sometimes I might get a McDonald's, but then afterwards, I'm like, you know, after I've eaten it, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, it's uh, it's, it, it can take a discipline, can't it? Sometimes with you know, um, diet and food, and I think like it's that kind of balance, isn't it? We kind of have to have that balance in some way as well. Yeah, definitely. Balance, it's like important, like with everything. Also, like what I had experienced, like it's uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I turned off my phone, not phone, but uh, social media for uh, almost two weeks, like Facebook, Instagram. And I can say after so many years, be on Instagram and Facebook every single day. It was so amazing. I could start thinking more clear. Nothing was um, disturbing me. So even I enjoy more food because before when I went somewhere, I took a picture, I had to post it and eat. And it's so much uh, distracting. So I believe that it's another now. It's becoming, it will become more hit, like disconnect yourself for a while from social media. Yeah, because it gives you 
time to think, time to think actually who you are, who, what you want and what you want to become, your dreams. So I believe it's another part of that puzzle. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's like you clear your body and also you clear your mind. And again, it's about the reconnecting with ourselves. And we really, we really live in a world of such a distractions. Like there are really distractions every single where, everywhere. And it's just really so hard to stay mindful and navigate it because the news, the social media all, are all designed to basically grab our attention. So only if we are really like strongly rooted in ourselves, we can resist and kind of like direct those, those, uh, those channels where our attention goes. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of no. jealous of you, Katarina. Like to be disconnected for two weeks, I'm kind of jealous for real. It's amazing. It, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't even hard. I thought, oh my mm. god, it will be very difficult, but it wasn't. I just was That's walking. Great. Yeah, I was walking and uh, didn't think about it. I was thinking about different things. I was actually happy because I felt overwhelmed so much, like with messages, with that if I have a little free time, I'm just scrolling down. And then my head, I felt like it's going to explode. So I was like, no, I need it. I need mm. it. And also now I'm reading book. It's the, the power of the heart, which is saying we should find for ourselves every day about some time, just calm down, don't do nothing. Just lay down or sit down and don't do nothing. And in that moment, we are kind of able to connect with our heart, and which is my mind, our mind are, is telling us something, but it's important to listen our heart. And then, or the same thing is happening where we were walking. When we are walking, kind of brain stopped wo uh, working for a little bit, and we are able to connect to our heart. Also, so that's what I'm reading now about this so i wanted to share with you that's, that's really beautiful. nice mm -hmm. yeah it's like more, more things but i'm still kind of try to um still go uh, into it yes <laughs> no, that's awesome i think i think like you said it's it's really important to think like you said be aware not only of our diet but you know like social media and you know how much we're taking that in and how much our focus how much of our focus is going you know, into our devices um, because that, you know, social media can make us feel a certain way sometimes, which then probably leads to us, you know, wanting to grab, I don't know, a snack or something. Because I think like you, some, especially on Instagram, you can see things on uh, Instagram where somebody might be in a nice sunny beach or somewhere and you think, oh, that, I'm not there. So it makes you feel negative. Oh, I'm going to go and eat this to make me feel better. So there is kind of a correlation between that and how we, I think, act and behaviors, isn't it, as people. So it, it's good that you took that time just to, like, you know, have that time out. So I think it takes a lot to do that. Um, I think I, 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 I've, to, I, I've had a few days off social media. I've not done two weeks, though, so it'll be interesting to see what that's like. Yeah, because I, I did it for one week like when I was walking and then I was forced to come back home because I injured knee. But when, yeah, I, yeah. when I came home, I was like, no, I think I'm not ready to turn on. I, I just was talking with my friends through WhatsApp or through messages, but not social media. I was like, no, I'm not ready. So I was just sleeping, thinking, reading. And then I, after one week later, I just turned on. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, bad. that's so good. Mm -hmm. yeah right so yeah i believe like every day we really have to practice this like mindfulness and actually like every day like the very next minute like we have the chance to change something you know like if you go through like uh, to mcdonald's through the drive through like don't kill yourself over it but try to make a better choice next time you know mm. it's always about improving yourself on the little little details Mm. But actually, then it really it comes together as a puzzle, like Lina said. It's really all a puzzle. So 
then you will train your brain to think differently. You will uh, become used to catch yourself like mm. mid action, you know what I mean? Mm. And then also maybe you will start like planning your meals better. Like if you have those triggers in a car, I'm just using you as an example. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, it's fine. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. So I don't have to use myself. Thanks. <laughs> and and um, so, yeah, so it's basically like everyday process. And again, yeah. really, you are you are your own competition so it's really the life is about being the better and better version of ourselves it's like we have we have iphones we have i have samsung we have computers mm. always the mm. next version always the update so mm. we really have to keep updating ourselves our habits our eating system mm. our way of thinking actually so yeah. it's continuous update every day every minute every Every next step, we can mm. update something and upgrade. So that's that's beauty of life, you know. That's basically why we are alive, to evolve yeah. and to improve. Yeah, no, it's really well well put, and I, I I agree with you. And I think like, um, you know, we have a choice, don't we? How we choose to live and act, and you know what we choose to do, what we choose to eat, and you know the way we think as well, especially because you know we're kind of pro we become programmed don't we you know when we're growing up and you know our way of thinking our habits our behaviors so like you said it's important to be aware of that as well and you know to be constantly kind of like I said upgrading yourself um you know, a bit like a computer in some way you know and putting in new information and, and the right information i think as well um i, I saw i saw a crazy statistic uh, um fact and it was like in the first seven years of your life it said something like your subconscious mind is programmed at like 95 percent so in your adult life you're like five percent conscious whereas you know you were kind of running off the information we've we've taken on board growing up so in our adult lives we have to kind of reprogram that yes we really run basically on autopilot mm. like on the programs that, we've, that were put into us when we were up to seven years old as the study says that's really yeah. scary but then you know we really get into time into the age when we really have to take responsibility of our life we have to stop blaming the circumstances the political system the parents the family the whatever you know what i mean and we really mm. have to actively create who we are, the life that we want. We have to actively choose the people we surround ourselves with. Mm. This is very important who you surround yourself with, who you listen to, who you mm. don't listen to and stuff like that. So it's, we really have to take responsibility. There is like, like really no shit, like mm. uh, really 100% mm. our responsibility. It's yeah, painful. No, people don't want to hear that, but it's what it is. Yeah, no, I agree. Katarina, what do you think? You are, you are, you are great in these things. Yeah, I believe like that it's absolutely true. Like we have to become more conscious, more aware of our life. Mm. And I think that this is actually starts with the food, right? That's what I believe in, and that's what I want to help to the world and to the people with healthy food, with uh, easy, easy to prepare and nourishing, because it's really important then we have that energy then we have that enthusiasm and enthusiasm mm. <laughs> enthusiasm yeah yeah yes that's the world uh to want that change to want to become better person because if we don't eat right we feel shitty we mm. feel like we want only sleep we want only alcohol party you know and we feel terribly so when we yeah. want to have change we need to change what we eat and become healthier more energy yeah and then everything after that everything's coming together we start more be like more aware what we want and what it's right what it's not right yeah, yeah. and actually funnily also enough like the body knows itself that it feels better after certain foods 
So mm. it is really not that hard at all. I don't know, Katarina, do you think it's difficult to become healthy or not? For me, it's like, it's not that hard. It's not. Like when you're connected with your body, it's kind of easier to follow the right path. Yeah, what do you I think? Yeah, I believe, I think that the most difficult is do the first step. Mm -hmm. it's, it's to decide that you want that change. If you really want, if you do that first step, like decide, okay, from Monday, I'm going to do that. And you're going to stick with that. After that, everything gets much easier because you are going to start see changes. And then when you start to feel more healthy, and if you take some bad food, you will realize, oh my God, it doesn't do nothing good to my body. So you go naturally back to the better food because you realize, oh my God, I feel so amazing. And you take something bad and you are so tired, your brain is so foggy. So you said, oh my God, why am I doing that? But how you said before, it's important, um, don't, don't be ashamed of yourself. Just, okay, it can happen. Every one of us, sometimes we take some bad food, but it's okay. We are humans. We are not perfect. So just next day, you're going to do different change. You're going to fix it with healthy food. Yeah, but it's about to eat mostly, mostly the healthier food. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I think like as well, I, I noticed, um, I won't go too much off topic, but my, my friends came down to see me for a couple of days. So my kind of like usual eating kind of way of eating kind of went out the window a little bit. So, you know, one night we had pizza, like fair enough. And then one the other night we had, a, we had burgers um and we went shopping and i forgot to get some fruit and i usually have an apple banana you know in, in the, each day so i kind of didn't eat too healthily when i was with them but i noticed instantly my mood you know how i how i felt like i had a good time with my friends but i knew in, in my body i i didn't feel you know the same my my usual self compared to when i eat other foods and have fruit and I remember like, you know, a couple of days after I was like, I just need some fruit. <laughs> so I went to the shop and I bought some bananas, you know, and I felt better. My body was like, oh yeah, you know, I, I need this. Um, but like, yeah, you, you, you notice a difference, you know, when you eat certain foods that aren't good for you. And I think it's okay to do that. But like you said, in moderation, um, but like what you said as well, you know, it's like those first initial steps, isn't it? Which can be difficult, but once you, start to recognize what makes you feel good and what doesn't you kind of rather go towards the things that do make you feel good yeah. yeah it's like you know funny how the people are taking care of their cars mm -hmm. like you know the car it's like you know to keep it clean and the best fuel and you know perfumed and shiny and glitzy mm -hmm. and whatever and People take much worse care about their own bodies, you know, and it's just really so funny, but it's actually like very, very similar. And I believe that human body is much more than a car. So yeah, just really, you know, to put in a perspective and then it really clicks yeah. in the brain somehow, you know, but actually, you know, it's like really amazing that you actually were consciously able to notice that the bad mm. food kind of uh affected your mood you felt differently and it affected your body so it's kind of like first step you know to start mm. recognizing the changes or these things these patterns so then it can help you first of all you really have to like know uh, what to change so first is to recognize it and then mm. you can consciously start making some changes yeah no, I, I agree with you. And I think with perspective of the car as well, like, you know, um, you know, pulling up, I'm in the car now. Um, but like, you know, you I'll, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, um, our body is almost like an engine, isn't it? You know, like a car engine. You can't run a car without putting efficient oil in it. You know, if that was a person, you know, you've got to drink water. You know, the, the fuel you put in a car is a bit like I said, the person, the fuel you fuel yourself with you know will get you you know 10 miles or you know 100 miles you know depending on 
what you eat. You can't, if somebody's living yeah. on potato chips and fast food, they're not going to be able to run as far as the person who's eating kale, fruits, and a balanced diet. That's yeah. good. But um, I think, like I said, it's, it is important, you know, to, I think now with social media, we're quite lucky in, in that fact because people can then share, you know, what they're doing with the world and that kind of can inspire other people to then try out those ingredients. Because I know that um, when I was last talking to um, Katerina, she was saying she um, was making like vegan, is it vegan ingredients or vegetarian ingredients? Vegan, yeah. Vegan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so like you asking what ingredients, vegan or sorry? Yeah. yeah, so like the most important are greens, right? Because they have a lot of chlorophyll, what we need, that's the most important. And then uh, sprouts, sprouts which are easy to sprout at home. It doesn't require so much and it's ready in two, three days then some grains and if you make like very delicious dressing then you all set you don't need, need nothing more you just mix it greens sprouts some grains or lentils with the dressing and you can prepare it dressing in bottle and you have for a few days and you can prepare in one day like two three different dressing and you are all good yeah no, that's the thing, isn't it? That's amazing. I think, like, as well, people, you know, people can realise how much money they save if they do start kind of, like, you know, living in that way by buying certain foods instead of buying something just to throw in the oven. Because um, I saw a TV programme and this family, they got this family and they looked at what they were buying in the supermarket and then they switched what they were buying for this other stuff and they saved, like, £200. So, I mean, I think you can save a lot of money, but I think a lot of people want things now. A lot of people want things straight away. And we can all be guilty of it, but I think, you know, if you just go through the process of preparing a meal and, you know, cooking it and doing it, you can kind of save, you can kind of save it for a few days and have it over the week. I'm, I'm sorry. My, no, it's my, fine. She came visit me. One second. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Do you wanna do you wanna mute yourself? Or are you good? Okay, I'm I'm fine. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. It's okay. What is it all? Right. No, what is it all? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you think, Veronica? With like um. You know, like uh. Forming good habits, and um, you know, with, with food, um, and in you know, making things and kind of like keeping that throughout the week yes i'm trying to do some kind of like meal planning and food planning but i really i am big on fruit so yeah. i'm kind of like i i kind of just only like blend i don't cook i just blend yeah. chop peel and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> i really don't cook i really don't cook much and I'm also trying to stay like gluten free, so I don't. Yeah. I haven't had a bread or bake or stuff like that in a very long time. And mm. again, like we have our vices. My vice is sugar and chocolate and stuff. But yeah. again, at least, you know what? At least I know what is my vice. That's important, so I can fight yeah. it. You know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. It's like know your vice, and then like at least you know what what's your enemy. You know, identifying your enemy is the number one step. So. I take it kind of positively, but I have to fight. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm the same. I mean, my my thing's chocolate. I mean, if I if I have chocolate, then it's almost like you know chocolate bar. I could eat it in like two minutes. Yeah. So. But, um, yeah, there are also ways how to make like a homemade vegan chocolate, which I love actually. So it's kind of like mm. better. You make it like with coconut oil, coconut milk. Mm. Uh, raw cocoa you add some stevia sweetener or monk fruit i love it so but you know katarina she's specialist in vegan um, desserts so yeah there's like so many variations right kati there's so many variations of uh, delicious sweet vegan desserts 
which are actually nourishing your body. So it's like desserts which are good for you. Imagine it's like heaven. Yeah. So basically, you eat desserts, but you don't eat empty calories. Right. They give the desserts. They giving something to your body because they are made from cashews, no sugar. I use dates, then cacao, maca, different superfoods. Yeah, walnuts, sunflower seeds. Yeah, so and it's surprisingly it's very easy to make. It's like super fast, but it's even it doesn't taste like vegan. That's the point. I believe it's even taste better than non-vegan. Yeah. I can confirm that. Yeah, wow. I only can confirm this. Yeah, I also you know what I also use uh, avocado to make like a chocolate mousse. Like avocado is so versatile. Like you can really do so many things with avocado. And when you like put in the blender, it fluffs up, and then you can you can add whatever flavor you want into it. And mm. it is like awesome. And you put it in the in the fridge, it lasts a couple of days. But you know, avocado goes like brown, so you have to be careful. And then also chickpeas. And 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 what else do I use? Which is like very versatile. If like black beans and red beans. Mm. When you rinse them, they are very neutral in taste, in flavor. They are very neutral. Mm. So again, um, I think like Chinese use them a lot for various kinds of cakes. Yeah. Like black bean cakes and red bean cakes and stuff. So I was like, oh my God, what is that? But it yeah, actually yeah, works. Yeah. So yes, I love it. No, it's, it's good. I mean, I think it's like, it's that kind of fun part of it as well, isn't it? You know, you kind of, experimenting and playing around with different foods and that kind of like excitement to it as well mm -hmm. which kind of like i think you know will help people to kind of get motivated to do it because it's that kind of fun aspect as well like and, and trying new things is quite you know exciting and mm -hmm. you, do, you just don't know until you try do you really i mean my my mum's my mom and my brothers are like you know vegetarian slash vegan so it's kind of through them living that way has made me think more about what I'm eating and you know how I feel about food as well it's kind of like made me think a lot about it um which is really important but I think like you said like there's some really nice vegetarian vegan dishes which you know are, are much nicer compared to normal dishes I had like a vegan burger once and I think it was like halloumi is it halloumi cheese halloumi um And I was like, I never want to have another beef burger again. You know, I just, but um, yeah, really gets you thinking. I think a lot of people are more going more, you know, gluten-free and vegan-free, aren't they? Things like that. Mm -hmm. You really feel better. I mean, and when I feel better, I just want to feel better. I don't want to feel worse. So why not mm. stick to it, you know? So, yeah. But again, it's really... You have to be really mindful. It doesn't come automatically, and mm. but it's but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Mm. Like when you see how better you feel, how much better your brain works, mm. Mm. how much like clearer and sharper your mind is. Um, when you go to the gym, you can do more without being less tired and stuff mm. like that. So uh, when over time you start seeing and feeling these changes, then mm. it's kind of like automatic choice. Like why would you go uh, back to the bad choices if, if, if uh, you feel better this way? Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and also like a lot of people, they, don't, they are afraid to start because it's their habit. It's their habit. They eat all their life bad and it's difficult to change their diet. And they feel also overwhelmed because they don't know where to start. So it's also important. You don't need to do all changes at one time. And one day you can decide, okay, now I'm going to avoid sugars. Mm. Then if you feel good. You start avoid um, bread or you start be more conscious about oil. So you are start using more, less oil or you avoid uh, fried things. So mm. it's like step by step. It doesn't need to be all at one time. 
because it's very overwhelming for someone who eat some way all their li- lives. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I agree. I think like as well. Um, in terms of like you know like this way of like living and eating, um, do you think it's like easier if somebody's family are already doing that? So if somebody's growing up and their family are already kind of vegetarian or vegan, it's probably easier to transition to to eat in that way. Yeah, of course, I think so. Yeah, I think it is easier. Yeah. Like you, have, you, if you live in an environment where they're already vegan or vegetarian, it should be easier, naturally. Mm. I believe. So, yeah. Yeah. Because. Do you, do you, family, sorry. Yeah, because family, they all are, the members of family. They already knew recipes. They knew the community. They know where to shopping, so they can help with that since beginning. If you don't know it all, you don't know how to cook especially if you don't cook at all then it's even more difficult so like people who eat this way they can recommend you restaurants or what to order in the restaurant instead of it yeah yeah no so do you, do you think this should kind of be put into like the school curriculum in education do you think that would be awesome that would be awesome unfortunately our political and economical system doesn't support this <laughs> so you yeah. know we have this huge pharmaceutical and food lobbies who will never support this but it would be really awesome if the children can be like really you know led to better eating habits better mindset habits mm. you know to take responsibility of their choices and mm. stuff like that i would basically love that children i are taught that they are not in ownership of their parents and they are mm. their own individuals you know i mean it would be like awesome but of course it's it's not legally possible in current system so yeah but it would be beautiful mm. no it's, it's definitely interesting i mean i've seen like sometimes you know moms with their babies or their kid and they and they go around the supermarket and they give them like a, you know a bag of carrots or a fruit bag, you know, rather than a packet of crisps or something like that. So I think you know, as at an early age, it's probably more effective, isn't it? As well, it just kind of starts that kind of process. Yeah. Is there anything else that you guys would like to bring up, or anything you'd like to bring to talk about at all? I think we had some nice topics. Yeah. We covered some nice areas. Yeah. Kathy, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. No, oh, awesome. But um, but no, it's been it's been great talking to you guys, and it's been good to touch base on these topics. I think you know it's important to you know think about these things and to kind of raise that kind of awareness around, you know, nutrition and health, you know, in general as well. And we really have to remember that we can make change in the Mm. next minute, you know, with the next meal, with the next drink, because the drinks are also a big part of this, what we drink. Mm. Because everything is like packed with sugar and whatever. I don't even mention alcoholic drinks. So, yeah. So, the very next meal, the very next drink can be already beginning of the change. So it's really only in the head. It's really the mindset. Mm. And it's easier than we think, actually. It's really easier than it may seem. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I totally agree. Do you have anything um, else to say, Katrina, on that as well with drinks? Yeah, I believe, yeah, that's actually, we forgot to mention that, that it's very important as well. So that's, that's definitely a good change to include, like try to avoid sodas and drink more water. If people, they don't like usually water, you can always add lemon or lime to flavor it up. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's the, the most important, like sometimes we are hungry, we, Actually, we think we are hungry, but actually we are thirsty. So because mm. our body it's a, contains mostly from water, and we need to refill that water back to the body. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Like, really makes you start to think, doesn't it, about you know, the body and you know our minds and how we kind of work and you know what's good and what's bad. And I think it's really important, you know, the things that we've spoken about. And I hope that, you know people take something from this where they can then you know apply it to their lives and you know even learn something new. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that's it. But um, but no, um, it's been great talking to you guys again and uh, reconnecting. And um, thank you. Thank you so much. You, hey, no, you're welcome, and hope you have a great day uh, wherever you are. And I'll I'll put your details in the description for people to find you as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you, no, you're welcome. <laughs> have a great day. You too. Thank you. Take care. Take care.